ruling from the Supreme Court that could have an impact across the country. The justices have struck down limits on federal law on the overall campaign contributions that the biggest individual donors may make to candidates or political parties and political action committees. Now, the justices said in a five to four ruling that Americans have the right to give the maximum amount to candidates and parties and PACs without worrying that they're going to violate the law by bumping up against a limit on their contributions. The decision does not undermine, though, those limits on individual contributions to candidates, say for president or Congress, which is now $2,600 per election. But not everyone is happy with this decision. Congressman Paul Tonko, for one, said, quote, we should be a government of the many, not the money. Today's flawed decision by the Supreme Court means more money in politics and less power to the people, plain and simple. I will continue to work with Republicans and Democrats in Congress to pass common sense legislation that will level the playing field, the political playing field, between billionaires and the middle class. And again, to be clear, it applies to federal elections. It does not affect state elections. We're going to check in now with our political analyst, New York uh, Post State Editor Fred Dicker to find out maybe what's the mm -hmm. buzz in at the Capitol about this today, Fred, and uh, and whether there is this sense, as Paul Tonko says, that this has completely uh, skewed the playing field. Well, Paul Tonko uh, lives with crying crocodile tears, in my view. The limit to his campaign stays at twenty six hundred dollars. Governor Cuomo can raise sixty thousand dollars a pop. I don't hear, hear Paul Tonko complaining about his fellow Democrat. This ruling is not going to have much effect at all. It doesn't affect New York elections. And it really is a fair ruling in my sense. It's not unexpected. The court, after its ruling in Citizens United in 2010, which authorized or said it was constitutional to have unlimited expenditures for uh, non-coordinated campaigns, independent expenditures, was really expected, given the lineup of the ideology on the court, to come down with this ruling. As I said, it doesn't mean very much. The contribution limits now of 2,600 for a congressional race are very low. Here in, the, uh, New, in New York, if you're running for a mere state Senate seat, you can get seven or $8,000. But let me just point something out, how arbitrary and capricious this was. And that's part of the reason they held it to be unconstitutional. Right now, under the uh, existing law, you could contribute the maximum amount to maybe 18 congressional candidates. But if you gave it to 19 congressional candidates, you were violating the law. How does that make any sense mm -hmm. at all? I mean, what the, the arbitrary nature of the limit that you can only give X amount in total was part of the reason the court uh, ruled the way it did because it didn't make any logical sense. One of the takes that I read on this was a CNN uh, take and they, and they pointed out, well say for instance a, a very wealthy conservative donor wanted to give to candidates all over the country, that that might have an impact on legislation or, or somehow have some yeah. impact on, on the way this country does business. But that would apply to a liberal or left-wing donor, George Soros, sure. as well. The public, you know, the unions aren't restricted at all. Let me just quote the Chief Judge Roberts. He said, the First Amendment no more allows setting a limit on how much you can give to individual candidates or how many candidates you can give contributions to than it would allow a newspaper to have a limit, that it would require a newspaper to have a limit on how many candidates it could endorse for re-election mm -hmm. or election. So I think, uh, you know, to wrap this in the First Amendment, to say that you and I, if we're lucky enough to have a lot of money, can give to whatever candidates we want, I don't think is unreasonable any more than it is to say a newspaper can endorse as many candidates as it wants. And those endorsements, say they come from the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, they can be worth a lot of money. That's very yeah. difficult to quantify, but they're very valuable. No, that's an interesting point. Okay, thank you, Fred. Okay. And Fred, of course, is... Uh on the radio as well, live from the state capitol. It's weekday mornings from 10 to 11 on Talk 1300 AM radio.